Chapter 6, February. Judy. One morning, Kelsey came to me and said she had a secret she wanted to share with me. Ordinarily, I don't like sharing secrets or hearing other people's secrets. It's not far from lying, really. Because once you know someone's secret and you keep it to yourself, you're not being honest with the people around you. Anyway, Kelsey looked like she was going to tell me the secret no matter what. She lifts up her shirt and shows me that she has a pierced her belly button. Well, I almost threw up. That is just about the most disgusting thing I'd ever saw. I can't believe her mom would let her do that. Or maybe I can. After all, she did let Kelsey dye her hair pink. But I can't understand why anybody would ever want to do that. It's just gross. My mom always told me that if I don't have something nice to say to somebody, I should say nothing at all. But I lied and I told Kelsey that her belly button ring was cool. I didn't want to hurt her feelings. Kelsey, I knew Judy thought that what I did was disgusting. She's good at a lot of stuff. but She is not very good at hiding her feelings. But hey, she pierced her ears, right? What's the difference? Miss Rasmussen, I was in the lounge and I asked some of the other teachers if it was common for an unpopular child to suddenly become popular with the other students. I mean, that's what seemed to have happened with Brenton. He was just about shunned when school started and very soon he seemed to be quite popular. I couldn't figure it out. Miss Wallace, who has been teaching for more than 20 years, said that a child can change a lot in one year. Some kids start fifth grade at the maturity level of a fourth grader and at the end with a maturity level of a sixth grader. But she said that in all her years of teaching, she had only seen unpopular kids suddenly become popular a few times. She said that if that happens, it means the other kids are using him or her in some way. Kids don't just suddenly become popular for no reason. Judy. One day I went to get a drink of water after the bell rang for dismissal. When I got back to class, Snick, Brenton, and Kelsey were gone. They went to Brenton's house without me. That had never happened before. I was really upset. I hopped my bike and all the way over there, I was trying to figure it out. Was it an accident or did they do it on purpose? Maybe there was something they wanted to talk about and they didn't want me to hear. Were they trying to send me a message? Were they trying to cut me out of the group? I didn't know what to do. Kelsey, Judy came in all upset. I asked her what was wrong and she said nothing, but so obvious, it was all over her face. She totally cannot hide her emotions. Finally, she blurted out that she was mad because we left without her. Man, she gets upset easy. I told her it was nothing. We looked around for her after school and couldn't find her. So we left. What's the big deal? I told her she was being silly and then she got mad and at that. Her voice was even trembling. She stayed mad for a long time. Man, when she grows up, she's gonna get an ulcer or something. She just cares too much about everything. She's lucky she doesn't have anything serious to worry about. When I was six, my dad got hit by a snowmobile and he died. I was there. I saw it. When something like that happens to you, it puts stuff into perspective. Now, I'm not going to get all bent out of shape because some kids leave school without me. You know what I mean? Sam. In an email, I asked my dad if he shot anybody yet. He said he didn't want to talk about stuff like that, and maybe we should just stick to chess. He beat me pretty fast in that first email game. I guess I wasn't paying close enough attention because he captured my queen, and after that, he just took all my other pieces one by one. I'll never let that happen again. After he checkmates me, he asked me if I'm up for another game or if I'm too chicken. I tell him, bring it on, hot shot. He moves one of his pawns up and so do I. I move the pieces on our chessboard at home so I can see the game better. Chess by email is pretty cool. I would usually check my mail after dinner and dad's moves would be there waiting for me. I liked having as much time as I needed to decide what to do next. No pressure. 
I learned some of the basic strategies by then, like you wanna bring your pieces out from the back row as early in the game as possible, but you don't wanna bring your queen out too early because she's open to attack and can get in the way of your other pawns. It's really a complicated game. You gotta think. Brenton. Snake came in one morning with his chessboard. He told me that he was playing a game of chess against his dad and he needed some advice. He set up the pieces and I looked things over. He'd done a pretty nice job. His dad was a piece ahead, but Snick was in a good position and could still win. I told him a few things he didn't know, like a rook is worth more than a bishop or a knight, which was worth about the same. And if you had two pawns in a position to make a capture, you want to capture toward the center of the board. But he'd already learned a lot of stuff on his own. He's smarter than he gives himself credit for. I mean, I'm an okay player, not great. I never really studied the game. The more important thing to know is that chess isn't a battle, it's a war. You wanna gradually build up a tiny advantages and make your position better until the enemy has no choice but to quit. I advised Snick to castle so he could get his king away from the center of the board. Miss Rasmussen, I really didn't know all that much about chess myself. I'd played a tiny bit as a child. All I knew was how the various pieces moved. I didn't understand the strategy. But when I saw Sam and Britton talking over a chessboard, it seemed like one of those wonderful teaching moments that we live for. So I scrapped our lesson plan for the morning and I drew the chessboard on the chalkboard and explained to everyone the basic rules of play. The students started giving their ideas about which move Sam should make next. Sam and Britton stood at the front of the class and explained why some of the moves might be smarter than others. It was fascinating for the whole class. I could almost see the wheels turning in their little heads. We spent the whole morning doing that and finally Sam decided to castle. That's when your king and rook sort of switch places. It was a wonderful learning experience that I will remember for the rest of my teaching career. Judy. I couldn't help but notice that Judy wasn't spending as much time doing homework. In fourth grade, she used to come home from school and work on it for hours. Even if she didn't have too much homework, she would go over it again and again until it was perfect. I naturally assumed that her workload would be a little heavier in fifth grade, but that wasn't the case. It seemed like she never did any homework at all. I was worried. I mean, maybe she'd lost her enthusiasm for school. I asked Judy about it and she said that Miss Rasmussen was a really easy teacher who didn't believe in giving a lot of homework. When we had our parent-teacher conference, I suggested to Miss Rasmussen that maybe she should give the students more homework. She told me that some of the students felt that there was too much homework as it is, and a few of the parents had complained about the time their kids had to spend on it. She said that Judy was an excellent student, and that was probably why she finished her homework so quickly. I wanted to believe that, and so I did. Kelsey. Then there was the day that Judy made a Valenday's card for Brenton, and it was like World War III broke out. Sam. So Judy gives a Valentine's Day card to Brenton. She doesn't give one to me. She doesn't give one to Kelsey. I don't think she gave one to anybody in the class, but Brenton. Maybe she only gives Valentine's to the smart kids. I wasn't jealous. I mean, a girl has a right to like anybody she wants. It just kind of took me by surprise, that's all. I didn't know she liked Britain. Actually, I kind of thought she might have crushed on me. I mean, I can't imagine why she would pick him over me. Judy, I didn't like either of them. Snick thinks he's so cool, but deep down, he is so insecure. He couldn't get over the idea that anybody might like Brenton better than him. It meant nothing. It was just a silly Valentine, but everybody in the class was talking about it as if Brenton and I were going to get married or something. Brenton, I've always viewed Valentine's Day and most holidays for that matter as artificial celebrations that provide opportunities for a big corporation to make people feel guilty and buy greeting cards, flowers, chocolates, and presents. But it was a nice gesture. I thought nothing of it. Kelsey. There was this one day when Miss Rasmussen gave us a homework vacation. No homework for a change. 
Well, when we left school, we all forgot that there was no homework and headed for Brenton's house anyway, like we always did. It wasn't until we got up to his room that we figured out we didn't have any homework to do. We all felt pretty stupid. We were gonna go home, but Brenton's mom brought in some chocolate chip cookies that were awesome. We took them down to the basement and played ping pong for a while. Turns out that Brenton is a great ping pong player. I couldn't believe it. He even beat Snick, who was always the best athlete in the gym. Snick was all mad. And he was saying that Brenton was cheating and stuff. Oh, it was a riot. I'll say this for Brenton. He constantly surprises you. Sam. I like to hit the ball hard and slam it past the other guy. But Brenton wouldn't let me. He kept dinking these stupid little weak shots over the net where I couldn't reach them and putting these weird spins on the ball so I wouldn't know which way it was going to bounce. You know, that's got to be illegal. Ronnie. Yeah, I was the one who wrote the message on the boys' room wall. I guess now that it's all over, I can admit it. Hey, it wasn't as bad as what they did. I knew they were up to something. No way kids like Judy and Brenton would hang out with kids like Kelsey and Snickwad. Heck, no way any of them should hang around with each other. And no way kids like Kelsey and Snickwad would be getting A's. So I wrote, D squad are cheaters, with a marker on the wall of one of the stalls. I used my left hand so nobody could say it was my handwriting. That's all I did. And I didn't know how they were cheating, but they had to be doing something. It got rubbed off the next day, but guess word got around. People were talking. Sam. So I'm in the boys' room and I see the graffiti. I scribbled over it right away. I'd hoped that no one else saw it, but maybe every boy in the school saw it before I went in there. Who knows? I didn't know who wrote it. But I had my suspicions. The whole thing shook me up. If anybody found out about Belch, we would be in big trouble. Kelsey, Snick said we had to have another meeting, so we all met at the big concrete turtle in the playground during recess. We get there and he's all whispering and stuff, like we're spies. He says we may have a rat, a leak. He wanted to know who spilled the beans. Well, it sure wasn't me, I knew that. Nobody admitted it. Judy got all freaked out like she was going to cry or something. She's so emotional. Brenton said one of those weird things that he always says that makes no sense to anybody but him. Snick said we should really all be cool about it and remember that we made a pact not to tell anybody. He said that if anybody asked any of us about Belch, we should deny everything. Just say none of us knew anything about it. I figured it was nothing. Kids passing around dumb rumors about other kids all the time. This time, the rumor was true. Miss Rasmussen. After thinking it over for a long time, I decided to split up the kids in D-Squad. I didn't like the way they were always whispering to each other. It's good when a group of kids bond together, but when they form their own little secret society that excludes everyone else, it's usually a sign of trouble. I suspected something was going on. I told the class it'd be a good learning experience if they changed seats every so often and got to work with other students. I put Sam, Judy, Kelsey, and Brenton into separate groups, one in each of the corner of the classroom, Kelsey. We were constantly having these stupid meetings. It seemed like we had a meeting every day. This time it was Judy who said we had to have one. It was right after Miss Rasmussen changed our seats and seats around and Judy was freaking out. As usual, she was starting to get pimples on her face over this. We met at Brenton's house after school because Judy didn't want us to be seen together at recess. She was all worried. Judy, teachers don't just move everybody's desk around for no reason. They usually, it's because of behavior problems. Or maybe they find out that some kid has bad eyesight or hearing and they need to sit closer to the front of the room. But none of that was going on. None of the other groups were split up the way we were. With each of them stuck in different corner, Miss Rasmussen did it on purpose. I was sure. She'd probably figured it all out. She probably knew about Belch. Everything I'd worked so hard for was gone. My face was breaking out. I felt like my life was over. Kelsey. The phone rang one day when I was home alone. I picked it up and it was that Milner guy. He said he really wanted to talk to me. That guy, the guy, was like a stalker or something. 
I have no idea how he got my number. I hung up on him. <laughs>